The sixth lockdown is destroying businesses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to have a look at an article from ABC discussing the sixth lockdown in Victoria and how it's impacting small businesses. Now, yesterday we looked at expectations of 300,000 job losses in New South Wales alone from their lockdown. And, I mean, these type of stories, they, they, kind of, they, they target my heartstrings because I'm a small business owner. Fortunately for me, you know, all, all of my extra costs and burdens, you know, premises, staff, that type of stuff, uh, I shed long before the pandemic even happened. We kind of made the life change to sl- simpler, more efficient working from home. But... I can just imagine how much of a stressful nightmare nightmare to be if you're running a retail shop, something where you d- couldn't have that option and, you know, open up, lock down, open up, lock down, have a whole lot of food, chuck it all out, open up. Oh, fantastic. It's going good. Invest, invest, invest. Boom. Chuck it all out. Here's $500 from Mr. Government where you have to jump through 50 million bloody hoops to get. So, yeah, I can see why, well, why some of these people have just just had enough. Let's have a look at this article, guys. So Victorian business is reeling as the whole state is caught up in a sixth lockdown. And, you know, lockdowns are just the, the, the fact they're response now to everything. Victoria's sixth lockdown is hitting small regional businesses hard with pubs, restaurants and cafes com- uh, comforting staff as they try to divert food from landfill. The Victorian government and epidemiologists say the lockdown is necessary across the state to give contact tracers time to find the source of mystery cases and locate and sorry and isolate close contacts. But businesses are reeling. Matt Radel is the co-owner of Red Cat Cafe in Sale, Eastern Victoria, and is giving away lunches in exchange for uh, for a donation to charity. We've got some perishable food that in the past we might have frozen or taken home for the family or given to staff to eat, he said. We thought we'd cook uh, those items and people can have them. And in return, we'd just like a small donation to pass on to businesses that don't have the option to open as easily as we do during the lockdown. I'm on the front line. It's a lot of stress for people. People are doing it hard. And if this is something that we can do to help a few people, then it's worth doing. Another hit to the bottom line. Stephen Colombo, who owns Colombo Pasta Bar and Cafe, is the chair of the Swan Hills Inc. Traders Committee, said business owners would be feeling deflated today, as well as mentally exhausted and frustrated. I haven't really heard much about this causing people to close, but I'm sure with uncertain times, there's going to be a lot on people's minds and about the potential of that happening if we continue to open and close, he said. I know we were looking at just listings, advertising listings from, what was it, Gumtree, where people are essentially giving businesses away because you want to get out of these leases. Mr. Colombo said a lockdown can cause a drop of between 30 and 60% to a business's bottom line. It's not necessary for that one week that you feel the impact. It can take months to recover because you need customer or consumer confidence to gain momentum again, he said. More support is needed. New G Pub co-owner Simon Duck said the four-hour time frame between lockdown being called and beginning meant they had no time to prepare. You've got to try to put on a smiley face for the kids so they don't stress out, the West Gippsland uh, Publishion said. But staff are upset and crying because they don't get to earn an income, If the plan is to destroy a small business, then it's working. The government loves to spread all over the media. They are helping small business. But we have received nothing for the last three lockdowns. The most disappointing thing is is us in regional Victoria. There haven't been any outbreaks. There's not even one person with this virus in our regional area. Well, here's the thing. What if the regional areas could open, but no outsiders could go in them? You know, we will just all go back to what, you know, children of the hills or something, big, 
wall around every little town. Wodonga real estate agent Will Bonisi took to social media to take aim at the Victorian government for including regional Victoria in the lockdowns. If there are cases in Melbourne, lock down an LGA. If there are cases in several, several LGAs, lock down several LGAs, he said. Epidemiologists say lockdown is unnecessary. Well, they're probably... Here's the issue. There's a big divide between people who are suffering from the lockdowns and those who are not. Some people are enjoying the lockdowns, guys. I did a poll on my video uh, on my channel and people are going, oh, what a stupid question. I've got a video prepared where people are talking about how they're enjoying the lockdowns. They're out there, everyone. Some people have had no impact to their earning capacity at all. At all. So, Monash University Epid Epidemiological Modeling under head James Truer said the multiple mystery cases that sprung up made lockdown necessary. It came as a shock to me too. It's just so disappointing, he said. It came out of the blue and it's really hard for people, but I agree that when vaccination coverage is this low, we just have to do it. Small business minister and member for Western Victoria, Yala Pulford, said the health advice was based on the need to protect rural and regional Victorians due to the Delta variant's speed. Unlike the tracking and tracing and testing, oh, sorry, until the, the tracking and tracing and testing tells us everything that we need to know about this latest outbreak, the view of the public health team is that the safest course of action is a statewide lockdown, she said. She said separating Melbourne from regional Victoria with the so-called ring of steel like uh, takes time and redirects resources. Well, there you go. They may change, and it may be the case that you've got parts of the state where it's appropriate and safe to have different settings, but that is not where we are at today. A $400 million package jointly funded by the Commonwealth and Victorian governments will provide automatic payments to almost 100,000 eligible businesses, including sole traders. Other hardship funds will be made available to eligible businesses that do not qualify for existing programs. So there we have it, everyone. Businesses getting destroyed in Victoria. But it's necessary, guys. The epidemiologists say so. It's all to do with contact tracing ability now. Regional Victorian business owners are left wondering whether they can continue after a six lockdown. Health experts, the government say it's necessary, 400 million bucks. So, what's, what's the solution to this? Well, you know what it is, everyone. They're just going to keep pushing it. They're just going to keep doing lockdown after lockdown after lockdown. If you even criticize it now in the media, you're lampooned. Who is against it? A few people? I think we need to well, keep it in mind which political parties and who ma may extend these emergency powers in Victoria to make it a reality. And plan and vote sensibly at the next election. Here in Queensland, Campbell Newman's now running for the LDP on the Senate. Maybe we need a bit more of a mix at federal and at our state levels and even at council levels. It should be up to the local councils if they can open or close. Maybe we need to have restrictions in certain LGAs, but it's, that's what they're saying. They don't have the capacity to, to do it. You're just going to have to plan for it, everyone. Because this, 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 it just seems to be the, the case again and again and again. And will people remember this pain at the next election? Because it's not free. We're paying for it. Debt's just growing more and more. Businesses getting destroyed. Livelihoods getting destroyed. People are missing out on their lives. Is it worth it? As always, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.